to Mark chapter number 1. Mark chapter number 1. She said, 
that's not the question he asked me. But why didn't you tell him that we go to church, well, at least sometimes? But that's not the question that, 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 that he asked me. Well, why didn't you tell him that we, we, we read our Bible, well, at least occasionally we read our Bible. She said, honey, that isn't the question either. Uh, he asked me, does Christ live here? I want to ask you this question. Does Christ live in your home? And I wonder even this question tonight. What difference does Jesus Christ make in your home? What difference does Jesus Christ make in your home? I know that I'm preaching to a bunch of Christians tonight. But it's easy to come to church and seek God's face and seek God's hand and look to Him to help us. But I believe this, that when Christ comes in the home, He will make a difference. And what, here it is that Jesus Christ, He made a big difference when He came into the home that Simon's mother-in-law was in. He made a huge difference. Here it was that there was lots of events that was occurring here around the Sea of Galilee. And here it is that Christ is busy. Listen to His day. He goes out and He's in the synagogue in the morning. They obviously had church sometime there in the morning. And we read that He later healed the demoniac. And, and we read that uh, uh, after he, he was at the uh, synagogue in the morning, the afternoon He was at Simon Peter's house. And there He healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. And then he he went into the streets and he continued to bring healing. What a day it is, amen, for Jesus Christ. But what about that home? He's been in the synagogue, he's been in the streets, but when Christ comes in a home, what a difference he makes. Amen. Is Christ in your home tonight? Yes, you're here at church, and yes, you're here seeking God. And I'm not here to preach to the choir, but I'm here to preach to each of us as we are challenged. Is Christ in our home? There's something interesting that there is healing that Christ brings to a home. After the service, they say that in the ruins of where Capernaum is there, that you'll see the breakdown of what was the synagogue. If you would look across the street, you would see that there is a house, and that's thought to be the house of, of Peter. That's where the, they, they met, the early church met one with another. So right across from the synagogue was, was the house. And he goes across the street there, and directly across from the synagogue he walks, and he had probably gone there for some rest. But after he had gone there for some rest, he realizes that, 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 that uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law, she is too sick and she needs healing. And so here is God. And when He comes in the house, amen, God comes with saving power. Do you hear me? When God comes in the house, He comes with saving power. Some of you maybe have people in your home, they get spouse, maybe a child, maybe a grandchild, amen, in your home that is not saved. Can I tell you what? That when Jesus Christ is in the home, He comes with saving power. Amen. If you will allow Christ not to be kept simply at church, but you will allow Him to leave the church with you and drive home with you, He'll come with saving power. He's able to save your spouse. He's able to save your child. He's able to save your grandchild. He's able to do uh, exceeding and great things and bringing salvation. He comes to meet personal needs. Amen. Amen. What are those things that you have need of? Amen. Who needs healing in your home? Amen. What needs healing in your home? Is there more love that's needed in your home? Is there more appreciation that's needed in your home? Is there more hope that's needed in your home? I'm telling you tonight, when Christ comes home with us, He does things that bring salvation. You may say, well, I feel unappreciated. My husband don't appreciate me. My children don't appreciate me. I, they don't know what I do. Can I tell you, when Jesus comes to your home, there'll be more appreciation in your home. You may say somewhere in my home, the fires of love at one time were burning high and burning hot, but over the course of time, it feels like love has went out the window, and love is the last thing that's in our home, but when Jesus comes to our home, He brings salvation, amen, He can 
save love. He can mend marriages. He can build relationships between the mothers and sons and daughters and fathers. He can do all kinds of miraculous things when Christ comes to the home. Amen. You may say it feels like it's hopeless in our home. Amen. There's no hope that we're ever going to get over this hump. There's no hope that we're ever going to make it through this. It seems like there's no end to this. Can I tell you that when Christ comes to home, He comes with healing of hope. Amen. He will restore hope in a home. Amen. What is it that we need in our homes? Amen. Christ brings healing. Amen. Christ brings healing. The power of the Holy Spirit in our homes. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost that makes real the work of Jesus Christ that brings Christ right into our homes. He comes to heal. Amen. He comes to heal. I need to tell you that not only is there healing, but there is help. It's interesting that when we read of Peter's mother-in-law, that the Bible says immediately Christ took her by the hand and raised her up, and immediately she got the help that she that she needed so desperately. Out of the three, out of the four synoptic gospels, three, particularly Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all record this of. Peter's mother-in-law, that she got up and she began to serve others. Amen. When Christ comes in the home, there will be a gratitude that will cause us to begin to serve and help one another. Do you hear me tonight? Amen. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost getting all over us. The power of the Holy Ghost going home with us. Amen. And when He does something immediately to us, Amen. He brings us the help that we need. Amen. The gratitude that's in our heart. We begin to help one another. Amen. She began to serve. She began to share. She began to give her service to those that were in the home. Amen. Gratitude from God will begin to be manifested as we give service to one another. Amen. You want to talk about a happy marriage when Christ gets in the home. Amen. And does something for you. You can't help but serve your spouse. Amen, children. Are you listening to me? When Christ goes home with you, there's something that He'll do in your life. All of a sudden, you'll help mom and dad. You'll help grandma and grandpa. You'll help the neighbor across the street. Amen. What our children need is not one more video game and not one more ounce of entertainment, but what they need is a good dose of the Holy Ghost that will go home with them. And because God does something for them, they will begin to do something for someone else. Amen. I believe tonight it's not just another marriage counseling session that we need, but we need the Holy Ghost to go home with us and get in the middle of our marriages that will cause us to communicate and love and serve one another. Amen. We'll walk out the, the doors of our home. Our neighbors will know Christ is in our home. Amen. Because we will love them and we will serve them. There will be a difference made in the community because Christ came home with us. Hallelujah. I'm talking about when Christ comes home with us. Amen. There is help. Amen. The help can be in, in just a very simple way. Amen. There was a, a preacher one day who was dealing with a lady who was saying that her job schedule was all over the map. I would have probably recommended her searching for another job so she can make a better choice to be in church. Can I just throw this in here while I'm there? Amen. Everything about our life Amen. We are not led by our emotions. We should be led by our choices. If I was led by my emotions, I would never have done anything for Christ. I would have given up. But you make choices sometimes. Maybe a lesser paying job. You make choices sometimes. Maybe you choose the rougher road over the easier road. But you make a choice that will lead you in a direction that will help you with your eternity. Amen. Amen, most of us can preach, and I know it is. Amen. But here it is, a, a pastor is talking to a lady, and she's unable to get to all the services the way that she wants to, and sometimes that does happen. I do understand that. And so she wanted to do something for God, but her time was so limited. 
She didn't have much to do, so the pastor started asking her several questions. She said, well, one thing I do do in the spare moments that I have when it seems like everybody else is in bed and I'm getting ready to, to go to bed, she said, I do look at the newspaper. And so they, they began to talk for a while. She said, I can do something for Christ. She said, I'm going to look at every birth announcement and I'm going to pray for that newborn that they will know Jesus. And I'm going to look at every obituary and I'm going to pray by name for every family that's went through the loss of a loved one. Sometimes we think that doing something means that we stand behind a pulpit or someone listens to our voice. Amen. That is not what God is looking for. God is looking for men and women who when Christ comes in, they'll serve in the simplest ways because of a heart full of gratitude. They'll do anything that they can to reach out to serve others. I'm talking about when Christ comes home and He does something for us. It motivates us to do something for Him. Help brings joy and fulfillment. You see, because Christ has helped us, Amen, and He's given help to our families, it brings joy. And it brings joy to us when we help others. I have one little girl that she is just very animated when she wants to be. And she will just begin to laugh and roll from her belly this laughter. You know what, Brother David, what I do when she begins to do that? I laugh too. Because she knows that that's a mechanism that God's placed in her. Her little personality can do that. I'm telling you that when we have joy, it's contagious. we got to give it to others. Amen. When Christ comes home with us, He makes a difference in our home. The power of the Holy Ghost, amen, is manifested in our homes every day. Amen. We can't help but to share the joy with others. So not only is there healing that Peter's mother-in-law found, and not only is there help, but I need to tell you that there is hope. You know, one thing that I know for sure is that when people begin to run a high fever, their body has an infection. And their body is working to fight off that infection. But she also knew that she was bound to her bed that she was so sick, it seemed like death could even be imminent because she couldn't get out of the bed with the baby even to help herself. She was at the mercy of all those around about her, a danger that she was dying. But oh, when Christ walks in the house, there is a hope that death has to go. Amen. Uh, hopeless situations all of a sudden become hopeful. I, I need to mention this tonight. Amen. I, uh, uh, let me tell you that you may have someone in your house or someone that is a part of your family that you feel like it's almost hopeless. Maybe there's an addiction. Maybe there's a, uh, something that is binding them and keeping them. And you may say it looks hopeless. But I need to tell you that when Christ comes in, He gives the power to overcome. Amen. He gives power to overcome addictions. He gives power to overcome bad habits. He gives power to overcome things that are not pleasing to God. So I'm going to tell you that when Christ comes in the home, He makes a difference. Some of you may have children and grandchildren. Some of you may have extended family that drops by your house. Can I tell you that when Christ comes to your house, amen, that when that family member begins to come over, amen, they may think that it's a hopeless situation. They may feel like they're going down a pathway that they have no choice of, but it's a pathway of destruction. Amen. But when Christ comes to the home, amen, He begins to whisper some hope to some hopeless situations. Amen. Some situations that seem bigger than us. Amen. They're certainly not bigger than God. And God gives hope in the middle of despair. Praise God. The assurance that Jesus always brings hope. Listen, in some homes there can be strife, there can be bitterness. But can I tell you that it'll bring way to love, and the sweetness, will the bitterness will turn to sweetness. Amen. Christ, when He comes in the home, He knows how to bring reconciliation. When Christ comes. 
So there's healing. There's help. There's hope. The fourth thing that I want to look at tonight is, is that there is happiness. Now you may say, Brother Seville, I don't see that in Scripture. Well, let me just say this to you. If, if Jesus came by and He healed Peter's mother-in-law, or Sister Beth, it looked like she was possibly at the brink of dying. And all of a sudden, he comes by and immediately she's healed. Would there not there be happiness? Sister Rachel, you shared the little girl who, uh, 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 because of, of, of the infection that she had, they anticipated a very long stay in the hospital. Do you know what? Doctors and nurses, family members are all happy when outcomes that they project are different because of good news and everybody is happy. Trust me, I've been at some discharges at the hospital where it was celebration day because they were happy. Can I tell you tonight that when Christ comes in the home, amen, it will be evidenced by the happiness on everybody's face. Amen, you won't be coming out of the house with a big old frown on your face. There won't be any coming out bawling and squalling and tears running down your face. But it will be evidenced by happiness and joy that the power of Christ can bring. Amen, I'm telling you what tonight, if we will get Christ to the home, Amen. He will change things. Amen. There is healing and there is health and there is happiness and there is hope and there is, and there, there is uh, that, that, that strength that only comes through Him. Who's the builder of the home? Christ. Christ is the builder of the home. So why don't we seek Him for knowledge? for spiritual wisdom on how things need to be in our homes. We need to follow God's direction in building and keeping our home. In our homes, we need to understand that God has a bigger picture than what we may even see. When God comes in the home, there has to be unity. Man and woman have to be loved. There has to be a coming together and a loving is only Christ can do and Christ desires. I don't know tonight, but one thing that I want God to do is I want to bless my home. And I believe that each of you want God to bless your home too. Amen. Charlie, if you just come to the piano tonight. I don't know if you own your home, you rent your home, or you have built your home. But I want you to think about this tonight. That whether you personally own your home, whether you buy your home, whether you're renting your home, whatever your situation is, it doesn't matter. But I want you to imagine it this way tonight. That Christ is the owner of that home. And one day, that owner is coming back to check on that house. It's amazing. Our home, we often get knocks at the door without the telephone call beforehand. That's okay. We, we prefer telephone call the other day because we have two little girls that think that every toilet they all needs to be dragged out to the living room. And that's the first room you walk into. Now, if we know you're coming, we will stash every toilet away out of sight so that it's not outlaying the room and the My wife's probably going to get onto the crosses in our home. Because we want it to look presentable when someone comes. You are that way too. You know someone's coming over. You clean, you clean the nooks and the crannies. You make sure it's all well and good. Can I tell you one day Christ is coming back to your home? He's the owner. And when he comes to your home, 
How will he find it? How will he find it? You may say, Brother Seville, but it feels like there needs to be healing. There are such deep sicknesses and wounds in our home. When Christ comes home with you, He brings healing. You may say, there's some situations, Brother Seville, that if I shared with you, you would just think that it was so hopeless. But when Christ comes to our home, He brings hope to hopeless situations. He brings healing and hope. You may say, those of you need so much help in the house. Take Jesus home with you. Because He's going to help you. And then when He does, you in return are going to be with a heart of gratitude, wanting to help and serve others. Tonight, I believe that we can have the happiest home on the block because Christ is there. We need nothing else in our homes tonight but Jesus. My question to you, does Jesus live in your house? Does Jesus live in your house? If not, the power of the Holy Ghost take him home with you tonight. Amen. Fill up your earthen vessel with the treasure of the Holy Ghost and take the Holy Ghost home with you that he may live and abide there, that he may bring you in in the four walls of your home. Do I have folks that say, I want to take Jesus home with me tonight? If that's you, give me rain. Let's get all of Jesus so that we can take him home with us tonight.